one law there is in this world of ours which all nations and all people no matter how far apart or how unknown to one another have always recognized and respected that is the eternal law and order of the universe written where all may see it in the skies from every spot on earth where they have lived people have looked up in awe and wonder to watch the sun moon and planets travel across their unchanging pathways through the heaven they have noted how the seasons follow in regular order seed time summer harvest time and winter and they have regulated their lives accordingly and as they advanced beyond the state of savages all people have tried as best they could to divide time according to sun and moon and mark off the seasons in what we call a calendar this they have done with varying degrees of success correcting their mistakes if possible or starting all over again if their first attempt was too faulty to be of any use the roman calendar established by julius caesar and based upon the egyptian model was as good as any to be found in the roman empire but it still did not work to perfection in the year which we call eight b c augustus who was pontifex maximus or high priest in charge of announcing the holy days discovered that the year was beginning three days too late up to that time to make it right an extra day had been added every four years in February. So now he suspended having any more leap years until the calendar year got in step with the sun again. At the same time, as long as they were making changes, the Senate proposed changing the name of September, the Emperor's birth month, and renaming it in his honor. Augustus was gratified, but preferred the previous month Sextilis in that month he said the greatest good luck had always come to him so accepting his choice the senate passed this resolution whereas the emperor augustus caesar in the month of sextilis was first made consul and three times entered the city in triumph and in the same month brought egypt under the rule of rome and put an end to civil war and whereas for these reasons the said month has always been most fortunate to this empire it is hereby decreed by the senate that said month shall be called augustus so it was that sextilis became august in honor of augustus caesar as the previous month had become july in honor of julius caesar but the following month was to remain september because Tiberius Caesar was to cut short what seemed to him a silly practice, when as emperor a similar honor was proposed to him. There are only twelve months, he remarked dryly. What will you do when you have thirteen Caesars? It is a small wonder that Romans were having trouble with their calendar. To make a calendar that works perfectly is no easy task. It takes both a knowledge of astronomy and skill in mathematics. One difficulty lies in the fact that the number of days in a year, measured by the Earth's journey around the sun, cannot be divided evenly by the number of days it takes the moon moving around the Earth to make a month. Even the Greeks, with all their philosophy, evolved only a confused and muddled system and yet there was a calendar in existence in this august of eight b c that had been running perfectly for over six hundred years on a day corresponding to august sixth six thirteen b c when rome was still a village this calendar it is believed had been established and by people so advanced in astronomy and skilled in mathematics that it was to run for more than two thousand years without the loss of a single day then in the year fifteen sixty one it was to be deliberately destroyed by their mistaken spanish conquerors who declared it to be a work of the devil for they were native americans these people who had made this wonderful calendar and they were living on that continent unknown across the atlantic ocean they called themselves the mayans 
Spanish conquerors who followed Columbus knew of the Mayans, but Christopher Columbus did not. On his first voyage in 1492, Columbus landed on nearby islands. On his second voyage, if he had steered less to the south and more to the west, he might have landed on the peninsula of Yucatan, where the Mayans had built their beautiful cities, the most beautiful of them all, the sacred city of Chichen Itza. But even if he had landed there, Columbus would not have seen these Mayan cities in their glory. They were then in ruins. The tropical jungle was beginning to cover the beautiful great pyramids, similar to those of the Egyptians, which the Mayans had built. Wild, bright birds flew through deserted temples and palaces, which had been beautiful and magnificent as those of ancient Greece. White roads of stone, broad and smooth as any built by the Romans, were, by Columbus's time, overgrown with vegetation and no longer in use. Strabo would not have seen those cities in their prime either, had he been able to sail through the pillars of Hercules and southwest across the ocean. For it was between the days of Augustus and the voyage of Columbus that the Mayan civilization had flourished. In this year of 8 BC, the Mayans were in Honduras and Guatemala, and had not yet moved up into the peninsula of Yucatan, which was to be their final home. Yet they already had a long history behind them. They had set their calendar up in the year 613 BC, but they had looked back to and begun to count by days, many scholars believe, from a mythical time which we would now call October 14, 3373 BC. If that is true, that leaves over 2,000 years unaccounted for. Where had they been all the years in between? And what had happened on that date from which they started counting? Where had they come from? Who were they? Those are questions yet to be answered by scientists who today are still digging in those jungle-covered ruins. What we do know is that they were peaceful builders, tillers of the soil. They are otherwise still a mystery, as mysterious as they are marvelous. According to one myth which the Mayans told, their ancestors had come over the ocean from the east under the leadership of a godlike hero, or hero god, Itzamna. He was the god of light and life, creator of the world, father of them all, inventor of their system of picture writing, founder of the calendar, and their civilization. Sometimes they pictured their god as the rising sun, paddling across the water from the east in his magic skiff. Unknown ages ago, according to the myth, a strange ship had appeared on the shore of Mexico, near what is now the city of Veracruz, and this same story is told by other Native Americans of Mexico. The sides of the boat glistened like the scales of a serpent, in it were people of fair skin, dressed in strange clothes, wearing on their foreheads the symbol of the sacred serpent. They were known as the Chanas, people of the serpent, and because they were wise, they became the teachers of the natives whom they found in their new home. But they had separated these fair-skinned people, some going north into Mexico to become the Toltecs, some south to become the Mayans, though later they became united again. Is this a myth, or is it founded on some actual event? Were the Mayans originally fairer-skinned people from the east? Where did they come from if they were? Did they come from the lost continent of Atlantis? Some say so, and some claim the date from which they count to be the date that their old home sank beneath the ocean. And others laugh at the idea as being preposterous. There never was such a continent as Atlantis, they declare. All the people who inhabited America before the Europeans came had come from Asia thousands of years before by way of the Bering Strait over the stepping stones of the Aleutian Islands. There, since remains of great tree trunks have been found, some scientists believe that the two continents may once have been joined together by a forest belt of redwoods. Other scientists disbelieve both of these theories. 
The Mayans came from neither east or west, they claim, but originated on the western continent, had always been there, and were truly Native Americans. Still, the question remains unanswered. Who were the Mayans who built pyramids, wrote books, carved stones, studied the heavens, and invented a calendar as perfect as the corrected Roman one we are still using today? Who were these marvelous, mysterious Mayans?